Long time no see, fellas. I have reluctantly decided to give this game another chance because, you know me, I do love a good moan. The Sims 2 for Game Boy Advance. Unlike last time where I cherry-picked the episodes to show you because I couldn't be arsed talking for ages. Well, today I can be arsed and I'm going to talk for bloody ages. The Sims 2 for Game Boy Advance was released in October 2005, developed by Amaze Entertainment and published by EA. Like all the handheld Sims 2 games, we find ourselves in Strange Town, but in the Game Boy Advance version, Daddy Big Bucks has hired us, the man, the myth, the legend, Pooh, to work as an actor in his new reality show, Strange Town, with 12 chocker block episodes. We see a few familiar faves return Dusty Hog, Giuseppe, Misty Waters. So join me as I chat rubbish once again about yet another game. This video will contain spoilers. Oh everyone, the title, the music, time to create a sim. Back in the telly studio, bloody L Street, eat your heart out in it, and the t-shirts be t-posing. So we've got some delectable colour combinations going on, but I was unaware that shoes and hair clips are somehow connected. I decide this time Pooh will be flirty. Little did I know, you can change your aspirations within our journey into Strange Town. And there she is, Pooh hashtag star. The man of the moment has arrived, Daddy Big Bucks. Still can't believe his mum named him that, descended from a long line of daddies that came before him. Welcome to my boardroom, Pooh. You're here to help me make the show number one. You and I will both be rich, rich, rich. Now, before we start the real episodes, I've got a bit of training for you to do. Remember, no one else knows that I'm being filled with hidden cameras. Don't let it slip. Daddy has decided to come along with me just to make sure I don't mess up. How rude. However, not in person though. He's had his people develop a whisper clip, like in that bloody show, Trapped. It was made after this game was made. BBC, you have some explaining to do. I am the saboteur and not <laughs> the inner kind. Daddy will talk to me in the earpiece, kind of like, you know, on Ant and Deck when they did something like that. I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember, did they? I'm pretty sure they did. Anyway, look up how she's serving. Press start for our plot points. Go upstairs. Beautiful piece of television. I glance around at all four corners of my domestic prison, aka humble abode. I'm told to get some furniture, but that can wait. Of course, there's certain things that can't wait, which is why I've got my team working on getting him a toilet. Until then, go outside and see town. Oh mate, I can't be arsed. And I thought he said it was a secret earpiece, and I'm on a bloody flip phone. That's one of your neighbours now! Oh, and there he is. The Dusty Hog Blues begin to play alongside, I guess it must be Dusty Hog. That's Dusty Hog! Yeah, I know. He's a dirty, rough biker guy. Definitely not my crowd. Why don't you go make friends with him? Oh, our Dusty. We've been through a lot, ain't we, love? I greet the bastard as it were, and then in a panic state I ring up daddy. Um, what on earth does one say back to him? How does one get uh, chit chatting with a male? Quit the idle chatter! If you want to make friends with this guy, you're gonna have to do more than just say what's up. Have a friendly conversation. Can't be asked, but I reluctantly start a conversation off the friendly variety. And you know what? I forgot th what the talking was like in this game. I forgot chit chat bloody level one. I've changed my mind. I don't want to play this game anymore and get triggered by the repressed memory of intimidating that mummy. Oh, friendly one has been earned everyone alongside this goofy jump. Dusty makes me aware that it feels like we've been mates for years. But Dusty, we have. And then he abruptly pisses off. Go on, like the rest of them. Daddy has made a deposit into my account. Oh, I could get used to this. This is all you're getting from me, bitch. Why is he obsessed with me getting furniture? Just play a cheeky game of Falling Fernie. And then I'm told to head to the pawn shop. The pawn shop, everyone. How vulgar. I'm not sure if I even want to go. By the time you get back, 
My props department will have installed your toilet. Lucky you. Oh yeah, lucky me. Well, of course, one would run into Dusty Hog in the blasphemous porn shoppy. And he's just talking a load of bollocks. Yeah, I came in here for a doohickey for my bike. Alright, I didn't ask. All of a sudden, I find myself being chatted up by the hog himself. You want to check out my bike? Conveniently, I need a massive shite. You must be able to smell it or something, or maybe seeing the big bog symbol above me head might give him a clue. Daddy rings me just in time. The toilet is in store, kid. The rest is up to you. Fantastic. I am touching cloth, as it were. Hurry, before you make a mess. Mate, just let me get on with her. I enter my abode, and while it turns out this bloke is having a shite too, he's giving brat. I leave him to it because he reads a paper on the toilet. Like, go on your phone, innit? Get with the times. <laughs> Boomer's having a shite, am I right? Then he realises I'm here. Get out before I irradiate your brain. Calm down, love. I phone daddy. What do I do? Intimidate conversation commenced. Look at him, sitting there on the toilet. But I earn my rightful place on the porcelain throne by being a bitch. I kind of like this toilet though. It's a green one. Brat toilet, innit? Daddy interrupts me. Took you long enough to take care of such a basic bodily function. Now time for one of our many a mini games. King Chug Chug. And I'm extremely scared of this big drink bloke. After I completed being consumed by an oversized soda drink, Dusty wants us to meet him in the saloon. Sounds like you're in trouble. Oh bloody hell. Not even a day in town and I've made myself enemy number one. But into the saloon I go and I'm greeted with happy moving day. I'm welcomed to the hood as it were by the townsfolk and gifted gifts from Dusty to liven my digs. And there's that army bloke. Oh and look, there's that bitch. I can't remember her name. But that's it. Episode complete. Each episode is rated by our favourite family, the Goths. So the better you do, the more points you get. And you can spend them on social moves and plot twists. And look at all this shite you can buy. But anyway, on with the game! Buried by the mob. Mobster Frankie Fusilli has a favour to ask of just about everyone in town. Where do your loyalties lie? So before each episode, Daddy be slamming his fists in the boardroom, telling us little funnies about each script. Got pick of the scripts, Pooh. You know Frankie Fusilli used to be a friend of mine until he crossed me. I'm getting him back. All of his gangster buddies back in Minneapolis are laughing at him right now, watching him on the telly. Ah, what a dupe. The camp intro of the show plays, and may I ask, how is this secretly filmed when they're all like posing for the camera? I awake in the wee hours to a yelling and a knock 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 bitch, Jimmy the neck is here love. In my days in sleepy state, the bastard is quizzing me on why I have such a nice house with no job, no reputation. I don't know mate, I don't have any furniture which is clearly a problem the elite has with me. One thing leads to another. Then I'm accused of stealing some briefcase. The twat won't move until I'm mean to him. And while it turns out Jimmy, the silly fella, lost the briefcase, and now Pooh is obligated to help the bastard. Why me, eh? Jimmy makes me speak to his boss. Thank you for silly. And now I'm lumped with cheering up his bitch daughter, Ara. So I reluctantly befriend this bitch. She wants to go gambling. Alas, she isn't allowed because casinos aren't ladylike. Uh, what? Can't even sneak in as Giuseppe is keeping an eye on the little rascal. And then she calls Giuseppe a loser. How dare she? She will cough. But I have to distract him with a paddle ball. Is that a paddle ball you got there? <laughs> An authentic Boink brand paddle ball. Would you mind if I had a go? Uh, just a couple of paddles is all. <laughs> yeah, get that paddle fix. Look at him. Bless him. Look at him go. We find these two suspicious piles of dirt for some reason. And uh, I'm given a shovel and some good looks that the briefcase is buried somewhere in this forsaken desert. And why are there so many diggable patches? But eventually, one discovers the case of brief. Now is the time to tell the daft sod of my findings, who then asks me to avert my eyes so he may suffer his shame in silence. 
and then walks back to me. And then I'm gifted a sentimental, precious family heirloom, a bloody water pistol. Hold the boat, everyone. Look at this shite score. SMH. It turns out that you have to do a few errands, fill your aspiration meter, snog a few toads, as it were. And why is our Frankie uh, making the noises that his daughter would make? There we go, full marks for Arpo. What digs beneath? Something strange is lurking under the arid sands of Strange Town. Is it a friend or is it a foe? Ah, I see you like rats. Huh? I do too. Huh? Those Strange Town sissies will get a kick out of this one. Ah, sissies? Daddy Big Bucks is cancelled. Why is he always slamming those fists of his? He should, be in he should be in the club. These are his golden years. The episode begins with us chatting to Jimmy the Neck. Pure bollocks this bastard is chatting. Pure bollocks. And then a rumbling starts, accompanied by a big fucking rat. Jimothy then frigs off. Oh, I'll deal with the rodent situation then. So following the trail of rats, almost like a Pied Piper of sorts, but the opposite, we're led to the old salt mines, towards a Wario genre of bloke goes by the name Lord Mole. Gah! Who goes there? Turn off the light. We brought the entrance to this cave for a reason, you hairless orangutan. The disrespect is off the charts as he continues to insult me, saying, You smell a seaweed and you sound like a donkey. You want to play tough? Know this. We, the mole people, desire a life of luxury and freedom and are therefore taking matters into our own hands. Mate, I want that too. I want that too. So bloody much so that I pressed some button and lost my whole bloody save file, didn't I? FML, fellas. FML. I decide to take this as a blessing in disguise and an opportunity as it were um you know to grind all the mini games and purchase all these skill points from this sketchy bloke on a boat and does it kind of remind you of that uh, spiral three level someone said anyway last time invest early get all the skills and you'll get more money and boy were they right look at this big foot game i finally figured it out and it's literally just like a free money glitch anyway i can't believe this is how you get more confidence Paul McKenna is turning in his grave. Skills like personality and hotness, the stuff that money can indeed buy, <laughs> now one can actually proclaim with confidence. I'm with the game! Also, Pooh is now Pooh hashtag star ampersand, by the way, FYI, yada yada yada. All that bollocks again. And oh yeah, I remembered that I'm now the proud owner of a water pisty water pistol for normal people. It's a bloody splatter shot, eat your heart out, in it. And look, it kills the rats too. Sorry, rodent lover 420. Lord Mole again wants a life of luxury and freedom, yeah or no? And he's requested the following of R. Poo ampersand. One spine from a flowering spiny cactus, a chunk of fissionable plutonium, a pair of rubber waders, and a pile of scrap iron. Bloody hell, not much then, mate. As I exit the mine, I'm approached by this ginger bitch, Penelope Red. There are rumours flying around that the subterranean mad race of giant mole people has infiltrated the salt mines. Can you confirm or refute this? What are they up to? Go ask him yourself, love. Anyway, it's just one bloke there. And also, why are they giant rats, not giant moles? What? Cactus spines? Iron? Plutonium? And rubber wadders? Good gosh, Poo, do you know what this means? Neither do I, but it sounds like trouble. He's just a bloke. Here's the deal, Greenhorn. A Greenhorn? She wants me to collect all the bollocks for Lord Maul, but she'll wait at the entrance so to catch him out or something. I can't be arsed, and she's such a cow, so I'll be nasty to her to make myself feel better. Here he is, our optimum Alfred. What a king. I ask him for a slice of metal. He will comply if I work in the chop shop for him. Scrappy challenge, any old iron? Ragbone! I'm only human after all. You know what? I completely adore our Oppy Elfie. I wish we could like romance conversation with him. Oh, he need that optimussy. At least we can hug the bastard. But anyway, back to the task at hand. And look, Pooh bloody died from touching the cactus. Daddy shouts at me and like calls me a slur or something. So I take a shower to try and forget. Forget, forget about him. 
I instead run an errand for the ever delightful Jeb. Short for Jebethy, who's far too shy to take this luxurious chair to Mama Hog, mother of Dusty Hog and Town Milf. Back to collecting shite for them all. Oi Jimmy, you're strong, can you rip that metal off for us? Everyone help, this bloke is chasing me. He is the quintessential himbo. Shut up and rip the bastard off, love. We grab hold of several cactus spines and yank them freely. Hands protectively covered by your work gloves. Alright. I speak with Luther, Daddy B son. Am I a rich fool? Sure, I'm rich, but I'm no chump. Chump? Super chump mentioned every one. <laughs> FFA one. Plutonium, who told you that? Ha ha ha, good one poo, I know nothing about fissionable plutonium 239. Not a thing. I beg to differ, love. I beg to differ. I could be persuaded to learn about it if you know what I mean. Oh, I know what you mean, alright. A quick convincing snog. Here he is, the hero of Minneapolis, Peppa Pete. Hi ho, land grab. What's taking you? Looking for some pressure sluts, some useful jets, and perhaps? Huh? Waders? Well, sure, I'm well acquainted with waders of the rubber variety. That is some shite, that I'd say. Even owned a couple of pairs in my day. Wonderful stretchy things. So apparently he lost his pair in this strange town pond. It dried up. Ah, uh, yeah. Right where I suspected. This hole. Look how yeah. stupid the waders look. Luther has hidden up to plutonium in the little bag behind City Hall. How bloody dodgy. So now all the stuff's in my back pocket, I head back to the salty salty mines, ever so thirsty. All of a sudden, I realise that Daddy B has a call centre headset on. Or oh, is he a gamer? The ginger bitch comes out of the woodwork. Hurry, hurry up and get out their line of sight. Listen love, it's just one bloke. And I'm pretty sure that like, moles can't even see. Now we launch into the final phase of our thing. Deliver the goods faithfully, actively nothing's wrong. Hiding in the shadows, a hidey shadows as it were. She'll be recording their transaction. I'm bloody hell, I'm gasping, spitting the proverbial feathers. I hand over the shite to Lord Mole and he's like, well, wait, what voice did you have? Well done my human gopher. Operation Infinite Leisure Time. Oh yeah, now we're talking, loves. Give me the stuff, now, now, now. Oh darling, calm down. Patience is a virtue, innit? Suddenly, Penelope is like, Not so fast, bub. Just leave the poor bloke be. And then goes on accusing the poor bloke of making a weapon. He pleads that his intentions are harmless, but Penelope is having none of it. We're not gonna listen to your lies. Poo is on the side of the surface dwelling people of the strange town, right? No. Then she demands me to make a choice. Of course I choose the mole man, you surface dwelling bint. Bo boss battle, I forgot this. Whack-a-mole boss battle, I'm somewhat, you know, you know, that Merlin game. The final boss battle was whack-a-mole. But anyway, in true sim style, of course it's whack-a-mole with moles and also humans. A self-propelled digging device. They were making a self-propelled digging device, easing the burden on their already damp, dark lives. The ever-suffering Lord Mole. A lifetime of digging does something to a bloke. He doesn't even have time to read a bloody book, for God's sake. Abysmal Penelope read, shame on you. Aliens arrived. Right, everyone, don't say X-Sizzle, don't say X-Sizzle, don't say X-Sizzle. It is Zizzle. It is Zizzle. Otherwise, everyone's going to be like, um, oh, you said x -zizzle. Well, you know what? I'm an obed, so ah, you're welcome. The shrewd Emperor Zizzle launches a full-scale invasion with a twist. You may not be able to find his army. Be careful. You know what? I proper love the Daddy B summaries. I find them so funny because he's like, ah, the alien script. Good choice. You want to know a little secret? It's cheaper for me to hire aliens than it is to pay someone to get into an alien suit. Stupid actors unions. We start this episode with Dusty Hog chatting absolute nonsense about bikes or something. Then here comes trouble. Tank Grunt strutting along. He looks really weird. He kind of reminds me of like a German Shepherd in his eyes. I don't know. 
something off, isn't there? Can't distinguish them. Anyway, he's talking all weird. Greetings, seeming human friends. On this yellow day, I say hello to you. <laughs> then goes on to say, Please kidnap Kaylee Wintercrest, only because my love to her is hugeness. Not for a secret access codes to nuclear facility. Not that. Here to award Kaylee with this bundle of my love. Why is Kaylee spelt so weird? Wait. It's spelt wrong. So me and Dusty slag off Tank for a bit, for, you know, for spelling her name wrong. I enter the facility. And what's this? Kaylee and Dusty are having a bloody mother's meeting. Here is Pooh. Am I interrupting something? We make her aware that Tank wants to see him, but she's reluctant to go and see him. We tell her of his strange behaviour, but then she gets angry. Dusty's like, go on, give the bitch the bouquet then. And she begins to freak out because turns out the paper flowers are like aerial photos of the nuclear plant. It got a reaction out of her. Played right into his hands. Where did you get all these pickies from, you twat? Oh, and Tank's acting all oblivious. Of course he would. I did nothing of the kind, lady. Preposterous. Is this some kind of prank? Then Tank too walks in. Kaylee, baby, are you come now to be my loving? He looks around. Uh-oh. Bye-bye. And then does the mewing thing. We all stomp outside. It was an alien all along. Dusty suspects us all of being aliens, and we all ponder for a moment. So once I fail to float with Dusty, I'm sent to the canyon and dams to investi. Short for investigate. There are aliens here, and it's him. Beloved Emperor Zizzle. One of his minions is asking for his disguise device to be reset as he touched some water. Mm, sounds like water is the key for disrupting the alien disguises. Soak him. Soaking guy? So he's squirting at some alien and he's like, I spit myself onto you. He mentions exploding the dance club. So of course I head there to foil the plans and look at them all there. So standing. And of course it was a bloody trap and I fell for it. Stupid cow. Pooh awakes all confuddled. She'd been thrown into the salty mines. Someone gets a chatting tip mole fella and he demands me to round up some more non-humans such as Bigfoot and Optimum Alfred and together the four of us should be able to do something. I like the way I'm part of the non-human squad as well. All of them want me to clear a certain area of aliens and look at the alien just chilling with the recycling dude also you got a funny t-shirt delivered um uh, here you go luther <laughs> yeah <laughs> parched as per usual i make my way to the salty salty mines to figure out a plan mate i don't know you're supposed to be in charge you are lord after all i decide to speak to jeb about the invasion and the bloke's totally oblivious telling me some shite about some boat in the desert i spray all the aliens when i say alien i can't stop thinking about i crush the alien i spray all the i crush the alien and they all say the exact same thing enough of this bollocks i enter the spaceship and emperor zizzle is like why is this bitch here and kills me but look i'm an alien now entering the craft once again you lackey must set up another disguise to fight again is our big plan i vow this alien bollocks is continued to be spoken so i fiddle with like the mainframe or some shit and it starts exploding the blokes all march back into their craft dusty states i'm gonna get them rock and roll dusty is like an alien or something and it calls kaylee beauty woman ah yes now is a perfect time to go and play some billiards <laughs> Blackout. A suspicious power failure at the nuclear plant raises questions of sabotage. Is the guilty party one of your friends? Or are greater forces at work? One begins with a smiling Kaylee and Peppa Pete. Peter now smiling. Gosh by golly, I was hoping to build a sundial out of some popsicle sticks and chewing gum. Kaylee is a busy lady and she is not happy. Suddenly, an explosion suddenly explodes, and Strange Down is plummeted into the seeming depths of night at bloody 10.30am. This morning I'll still be on the telly. Pete bloody scarpers off. Coward. Kaylee, however, standing in front of the explosion. I need to stop this. She's so mother. Stomping into that plant. Why is it all wobbly? And may I ask, oh, what is Mama Hog doing here? What's her job? Only just barely able to avoid total core meltdown. Mama's like, Where was that explosion? Like right outside, love. Mama Hog then noticed some random glistening shite on the floor. What's this? And then asks, What do we do now? 
girl, do you not have a mind of your own? One must acquire some nuclear rods. Nuki rods, as it were, and find out what this little insignia is. Not only one second after Kaylee and Mama exit the facility, I receive a call from Mama Hog, breaking the awful news that beautiful, beautiful Kaylee has fallen ill. You know what, Mama Hog? It's a good job I have 23 Nuki rods in my pocket. Also, that insignia, Chaz Dastard. Hmm, sounds a lot like Chaz McBastard for am I right? Date ruined everyone. Turn the bloody game off. I'm only joking though. There's work to do. Our Jeb needs some green goo. Avacadavra notices that I have a little insignia on my person, commenting that it's so busted she doubts even Kent Hackett would recognise it. I was about to get offended, but then I realised that we just found this random piece of shite on the ground. And apparently, Kent Hackett played Chaz Dastard on apparently the best show, Chaz Dastard's Intergalactic Star Safari. Never heard of it, love. Mama Hog also be working at the call centre too, something about a survey. Trust Pilot be like, all while doting on poor old Kaylee. Speaking of the bitch, here she is awakening from her slumbers, she mutters, my hair better not fall out. I have such beautiful hair. And you know what? She ain't wrong. We power on and investigate the warehouse. Kent's usual haunt. And he's strutting his stuff. Says something extremely vulgar. This new lock is harder to pick than a cat's nose. What? Who says stuff like that? A cat's nose? Picking? Dispatches. Sort this bloke out but our sleep-deprived Poo plods on into Kent's warehouse. However, Poo fucking dies from this horde of nuki rods. That evil bastard. I awaken in the medical centre, and Kaylee is grinning from ear to ear, and then says, Mama Hog tells me you had a little radiation bath. Nauseating stuff, isn't it? Smug bitch. But apparently Mama saved me. Got to me before she fainted too. So who helps you, love? Who helped you? Now our issue is to get some protection, but all Kaylee's bloody radiation suits are in the cleaners. What is she doing in them shitting? We reluctantly ask the ginger bitch for help. How does she know all this shite? I unenthusiastically hand Misty Bloody Waters 1000 simoleons for some retinol. The cheeky bitch told me that I needed it too. Picture of youth, you cow. Anti-radiation lotion produced. Apparently, a good dollop to the skin should protect me. And once I've collected all 45 Nuki rods, I get an unexpected call from Kaylee, saying she feels better. Um, no shit, love, because they're all in my bloody pocket. While I'm here anyway, I give that green goo to our Jeb, who's gonna mix it in the sand for a laugh. Later that day, oh, what's this? Kent and Zizzle canoodling. Kent's like, so tell me more about this television pilot you're producing. Zizzle is having none of it. Show me the nuki rods. Oh, how embarrassing. Little does he know I've reclaimed his horde of rods. Alas, our Zizzle is oblivious. Invisible nuki rods. What a clever idea. Um, no, they're gone. Gone to invisible. Yes, beautiful. Kent begins to get angry at our sizzle. Oh, luckily, Honest Jackson walks in, accompanied with Pooh and Kaylee. Honest says to Kent, he's got a lot of explaining to do. And Kent's like, how about I do no explaining and you just arrest me? Fine, love. A brand new scent. Kaylee Wintercrest. Wait, it's bloody spelled different again. Um, viewers, what is right and what is wrong? There are many inconsistencies in the spelling of Kaylee's name. Yeah, Emperor Zizzle's name is spelt perfectly every time. S-M-H. Sort this out, loves. Anyway, her sweet new perfume has surprising effects on the single men of Strangetown. I like this script. Good choice. It features Kaylee Wintercrest. Isn't she amazing? She's way more attractive than my first six wives. Um, Daddy B. Law? Do you think if I paid her enough money, she'd marry me? Anyway, on with the show. The scene opens in the town hall. Honest is like, we've got a problem, people. 
Pooh's like, what's the problem? Kaylee has developed a powerful new perfume, an elixir so potent that one whiff of the stuff will cause the sniffer to fall madly in love with the one who's wearing it. The sniffer? He talks of the chaos it'll cause, the fighting, the shouting, the harassment she'll suffer, and suddenly the mood changes as the boat plug smirks, not to mention the fact that poor dear Kaylee is most certainly in love with me. Oh yes, he has indeed been a sniffer. He chats some more shite before asking me to investigate exclamation mark TM and find out which fellas are planning on asking her out. He's a mayor. Don't mayors just walk around with the mayor outfit on and do fuck all? So can't he do it himself? Since I'm a nosy bitch and all these fellas are actually my boyfriends, I have a gander at all the eligible bachelors of this barren wasteland. By putting the telescope on me forehead. Yes, that's right, forehead. Tristan chatting to Giuseppe. Oh, women like horses. Therefore, he's tamed some for his date. Giuseppe's like, <laughs> Whoa, that's hot man, she'll dig that pony. Emperor Zizzle is chatting him to, to himself or maybe this nuky rod about Kaylee. Uh, he will take her, that's, that's enough of that. <laughs> Look, Jeb is chatting to um, Enrique Iglesias or whatever his name is. He's bought her a desert fuzz beetle. She'll just melt when she sees these. <laughs> Wait, what was that voice? Bloody hell, it's bloody Simon Cowell. I forgot about him. Well, of course, he's after Kaylee too. I hate you, Penelope Red. Whilst all the fellas are fancy Kaylee, Misty Waters isn't too happy about her getting all the attention. Leave for some for the rest of us, I'm alright. It's because you're not as good looking as you used to be. But it's okay. It's okay. That's just life, isn't it? I still love you. And that's all that matters. Me. But she wants to know if the other girls in town want to, you know, want in on Kaylee's perfume. They want to buy it. I don't know why I have to ask them though. Penelope is not interested. She is focusing on her career. Then we ask Ava and she's like, I'm not that desperate. And may I ask, why are we asking the lesbians if they want to attract some men? So we ask Ara and she's like, Love is a disease. Slay boots mother in it. Back to the task at hand. I tell Honest of my investigate exclamation mark tm findings um am i interrupting something do i need to give you a moment love anyway we tell him of the findings from the forehead looking through the proverbial third eye he responds these four fools think they have won the hearts of strange towns beatific beauty what about poo saying this in front of our poo we'll put an end to their wanton canoodling but we'll need to act quickly Excuse me, we? Time to put an end to the desert fuzz beetle, I guess. It's kind of cute, isn't it? We reluctantly spray it with our splatter shot, and Honest asks if I stomped on it. The cruel, cruel tyrant. I speak to Pepper Pete in regards with Simon Cowell not getting a reservation, and Pete's like, Arr, well, I don't think that's any of your business, bitch. Um, it very much is. So we have a good old laugh with him, so he lies about being fully booked, and here he is, the abysmal Simon Cowell calling our Pete Peppy. Not right, that isn't. Not right at all. Pete kindly breaks the news that he's fully booked, but in true Simon style, he's like, you're joking, do you know who I am? Bloody hell, what have I done? What have I done? Honest is so cheeky though, he's like, what's the tea, bitch? We got that smarmy little socialite, he won't take my Kaylee. I don't know whether I'm doing the same voice for Honest Jackson, I can't remember. <laughs> Why is Pooh even helping this twat? Why does everyone want Pooh to help them? Pooh's just a bloke. Ready to take down the next suitor, Tristan, whom Honest says will be a toughie, as he's quote, so dang charming. I guess, in a way. Well, yes. Wait, no, I take that back. Look at him, moaning about his cut on his finger. You know what? I've just realised. He looks like that. That evil Tom Scarvo from Desperate Housewives. Uh, when he's making our Giuseppe clean the barn for him, a darkness emanates off that Tristan. Well, he's not exactly cleaning though, he's just standing, but... Oh no, Giuseppe's like... Whoa, can you believe it? Tristan legend, the Tristan legend is letting me clean his horse stables. Oh, what have they done to you, my boy? He says there was manure everywhere. If Kaylee had seen how much poo there was in here before, Tristan would be out of luck regardless of the size of his... 
biceps. Why do they do that? All that talk of poo is making poo hungry. Jeb, can I have some shite? But he tells me not to be greedy and clean up some shite. But odd Jeb has surpassed his monthly poo quota, so forces me to take this load with me. Poo. Poo with poo. Look at this shite galore, fellas. I feel kind of bad for Giuseppe, though. I'm sorry. But things get heated quickly, and Tristan threatens to kill Giuseppe. What are they doing to my boy? They're making him out to be pathetic. Now time to foil Zizzle's plans. Here he is, with the toilet bloke. You must listen. Kaylee will be a fool believing I am being sick, and being green, she will not love for me. Oh, this bloke is translating for me. Mate, I can understand him fine. So he wants some makeup, so... He he can become human colour. While they're here, I take an opportunity to hug the aliens. If I can't romance conversation with them, this is as close as I'll get. I obtained some makeup from the abysmal Kent Hackett that expired in 1986, which smells fucking foul. Why Kent though? Do none of the women of Strange Town wear makeup? Anyway, here you are, love. Zizzle does something strange, and I guess that's him applying it full coverage and. Off he goes with his little bicorn hat and his little green off smoke. Aww. And the other bloke is like, hey, probably better that he doesn't know and struts off. Honest thanks me for honouring the town and has one last request for me. Grant my last request. He wants me to find out Kaylee's number. Seems to misplaced it. Mate, aren't you a bit old for this? You got that weathered face. Come on, my name's not Honest Jackson for nothing. Suddenly, I got pistered by Kaylee. She stops me in my tracks. That's close enough. My perfume has been driving people in this town. Batty! She wants me to help her get rid of it, but someone made of flesh can't handle it. Oh, I know the, I know the bloke for the job. What's it all about, Alfie? Why have you given me this liquid bitch? He says. I understand you require a method of disposing this volatile substance. Well, it's my lucky day as he launches daily batches of refuse into space. Wait a minute. Retin Link? We've got the greatest job on us. And we're not even on us. We're orbiting the world you see. Collecting space debris. I'll gladly relieve you off your burden. And it's shot into space. The new cola. A delicious new cola with a secret formula has an unexpected effect on your sim. This episode was paid by our friends at Chug Chug Cola Corporation. A bit of product placement. You know, just drink it down. Smile when someone gives it to you. Here we are, in Gothic Gardens, with Ava and Dusty discussing the vulgarity of ladybirds. Tank Grunt, as per usual, changes the subject with his main character attitude. Hey all, who's thirsty? Just so happens I got a six pack of the new Cherry Guava King Chug Chug Cola. And he begins a gulping the proverbial gulp noise. <coughs> Ava interrupts like, you like that swill? Oh sure, with 12 inessential minerals and sediments, Cherry Guava King Chug Chug has been mentioned by 9 out of 10 doctors as having some sort of effect on a person's health. Chug Chug is yum yum. <laughs> and right on cue, it's time for King Chug Chug. This fizzy drink man is so scary. No fizzy drink for me today. <laughs> Tank is now convincing Arpu to have a gulp. Go on Pooh, have yourself one. You'll love it and people will love you. Alright, I am a people pleaser after all. And Pooby gulping. Ah, see Poo, that wasn't so bad. Blur. Um, did your tum just say blur? Uh, I think so. My, ouch, I don't feel so good. All of a sudden, me and Tank become extremely tiny. Meanwhile, Kaylee is working and Mama Hug be like, I have an invoice here from the Chug Chug Company. Why do they need all the new keywords? Mama is so inquisitive, almost childlike. And Kaylee, the ever the businesswoman, is like, I don't know, and I don't care. I'm running a business, not an orphanage. Mama is like, what's that supposed to mean? And Kaylee's like, I have no idea. Alas, Tiny Poo and Tiny Tank are tiny. Where'd they go? And the garden? Where'd the garden go? And why is the hose so dang big? Uh, Poo, 
I think we're in Blech. big trouble. All right, small trouble. And why tanks slide up to me like that? I explore my giant surroundings and happen upon this ladybird. Look at them. They're horrendous. They're ghastly. They're ladybugs. Man, this is so disgusting. We're so wasted. We're goners. One squirts, one's a water pistol, which has also conveniently shrunk down to but it's doing fuck all. We need something stronger like this repellent where we can either fill the super drencher with repellent or don't fill the super drencher. Don't bloody work on tank though, does it? Suddenly an army of ladybirds appear, accompanied with heavy metal music as the light dims. And you know what that means? Shit is going down. But tank has other ideas and scarpers off. I squirt my way through the forest of wretched creatures and eventually happen upon Tank, who says a bug grabbed him and dumped him there. I very much doubt that, love. I very much doubt that. He's totally freaking. Is this the end of the road, man? Game over, baby. Game over. So using our karate poses, I force him to accompany me and he slides towards me as a grumble in a starts. Oh, an overturned can of glug glug cola, do we dare? drink? If I mean chug chug cola shrunker so glug glug must yeah we might grow wings or something. What do you think? What do I think? I think that there was supposed to be a ladybird boss battle here. Oh my god look he almost disappears and I can make him come back so I can kill it again and again. Anyway to drink or not to drink that is the question. Suddenly we cut to Dusty and he's like trauma dumping on Ava. Luckily Pooh and Tank become normal sized. Ava Dusty, don't drink that cola. <laughs> they inquire about our whereabouts. And Tank is like, you'll never believe me if I told you. And then they start having a lover's tiff. There was a mummy. People, everyone, people, I am dreading this episode with a capital with dread. I just remember the mummy. When things start disappearing in Strange Town, your sim vows to unravel the cause. After I saw that new movie, Ephraimel versus King Amontut, I knew we had to put more mummies in our show. Can you think of a better way to scare those Strange Town chumps? Oh my God, Ephraimel mentioned. We start this episode chatting shite with that Penelope. She used to be a lion tamer or something. Now I tell myself the FBI was the right decision, but I still have my whip in wicked chair. And no one asks love. Oh, thank God here's Luther. In a panicked state of all things though, there's been a robbery. Penelope's like, not my problem, love. Someone stole my Olympic 2004 Olympic gold medal. They have taken it back to Minneapolis. Mate, I wish someone had taken me back to Minneapolis. But I decided that this bitch is kind of funny. The truth is, I just don't care, Luther. I've got some socks to hand wash now. And then she frigs off. But now, bloody Luther begs me to help. As the apparent Minneapolis shining star. And now I was. We head outside. And the icon Bigfoot is having a lover's tiff with Jeb. Sub, what's wrong, Mr. Bigfoot? Why are you crying? Jeb is so thoughtful. Bigfoot says, Toilet paper man took teddy bear. Must be the mummy, eh? Jeb's like, There, there, Bigfoot. I'm sure this asinine story has a rational explanation. Asinine? Jeb is an intellectual queen. Now, honest bloody Jackie says Penelope is being kidnapped. Ah, oh, rip Penelope, you would love hand washing socks. How could this happen? The smartest, quickest, and deadliest woman in all of Strange Town allow herself to be captured. Oh, honest, you are cancelled. Victim blaming is not it. But why have I got to find everyone's shit? I head to the warehouse because the deplorable Kent Hackett, well, his warehouse is bloody on fire. I guess I'll in extinguish it with my water pistol. Oh, hang on a minute though. I've got a, I'm getting a call, loves. Time for the moment I've been dreading. The mummy. Intimidating the mummy. Oh, that was it. I feel bad. The mummy's only wanting to make friends and be likeable. Aw, I like you, mate. Please enter my home. A bit forward. Not in that way. What voice would you have? Please, please. You see, I live so alone. He keeps apologising. So I go to retrieve Luther's medal. Suddenly, the mozzies are out. Human, watch for state stay flies. What do you call me, mate? Foolish me has awoken the blood-sucking state stay flies. Now home too dangerous. 
Aren't you like dead, mate? This this issue this issue doesn't concern you. I'm so bad. I grabbed Miss Penelope. She seemed so so sad. I wanted to cheer her. Cheer her what? Yes or no? Well, she's in the bloody ziggurat. We run into Luther, who knows I have his medal for some reason. The mummy thought it was a magic medallion of happiness and love. He only wanted to feel happiness. You can't be mad at him. Look at that face. Well, that really tugs at Luther's heartstrings. A real softy, perhaps. A prude and softy. Off to John Zoo, and he's like, "Is he safe?" Oh, piss off. Mummy is like, "Wait, mummy is mummy and daddy in this game." Really makes you think, doesn't it? Anyway, he's like, I'm very safe, only lonely and needing help. Look at all the dots that mummy types. He's like a boomer. We fork out 2,000 smolians for the bug spray. Good thing I'm bloody loaded. Wait, I've just thought as well. There's too many bugs in Strange Town. Kill them all. Once at the ziggurat, because I guess we have to save this slag. I whip out my water pistol and. Oh. She's not here. Mummy blames himself. Oh, mate, don't worry. It's not, it's not that big of a loss anyway. She was shy. Oh, she was outside. Where's Bigfoot's teddy, love? <laughs> and don't give me a driving license, eh? <laughs> Honest is happy. Penelope is safe because the paperwork would be a lot. Why is that the type of shit they always say at work? There's no need for it, is there? No need at all. And Bigfoot is in an absolutely foul mood. Still no teddy, bitch. The mummy can't bloody remember where he put it, but he can feel if it's close. And the dirty bitch Penelope is like, well, you and Pooh are going to have to feel it out. What? Blasphemous. I'm thanked by Bigfoot. And Bigfoot then suggests to the mummy that he should buy a teddy, to which he replies, Pooh is nicer than teddy. I stay with Pooh for some time. Oh, great. Bloody great. At least until I die, I will stay by your side. For fuck's sake. Triassic Trouble. Honest Jackson has misplaced a dinosaur, or rather, its bones. Can your sim help him recover the pieces? Into its saloon, and I'm approached by Jimmy the Neck. Hey you, yeah you. Mr. Fusilli sent me. He wants... Wait, I forgot. Let me, let me try again. Wait, he's walked away and comes back. Hey, you. Ah, can't be arsed thinking. Yeah, he said can't be arsed, didn't he? So off to Frankie F I go. What do you think of the dinosaur theory, love? Do you think the bones buried underneath Jeb's ranch? He suggests a partnership of sorts. I dig. He keeps the bones. Sure, I'm not even doing out. And look, I'm digging holes like in holes. About to relieve my heavy burden of bones, I run into Jeb and Honest. What are you doing? That's what they say to me. I wasn't aware that the ranch was off limits, lads. Then, bloody Jeb, the snitch, is like, hey Honest, look at this bitch's pocket, it's in the shape of a dinosaur. Um, what? Oh, you know what they say, snitches get stitches. On the brink of being thrown in the slammer, he instead decides that since I did all the dirty work, he's got something else for me to do. You see these boxes? Optimum Alfred will be shipping the fossils to a paleontologist in Minneapolis. So, in lieu of you going to jail, you'll be doing a bit of puppy survey, putting bones in boxes whilst Jeb keeps an eye on you. Piss off. I carefully put all the shite in the boxes, one by one, and then break the awful news to Frankie in very close proximity. The next morning, Jimmy the Neck is here again, forgetting stuff as per usual. Spit it out. And oh god, he's forgot again. Well, I'll just speak to Honest myself. And you'll never believe it. The bloody knobhead. Instead of programming Alfred to send the fossils, he sold them all in a bloody auction. And then he wants me to help get them back. I'd make it worth your while. What did you have in mind, love? A gander at the invoice of who purchased these archaic bones. And may I ask, why are all the women of Strange Town divorced? Oh wait, Mrs. Helen. Helen. Hog. Maybe not all the women then. Helen? I speak to Helen. And she's bloody making dinosaur soup with the tail. 
the tastiest part, but now she isn't gonna give it back. She's waited 50 or uh, 40 years to make this soup. And I forgot, I wanted to make a very brummy, not um, that, that stupid voice that I used before. I forgot, I wanted her to be a brummy. The only way I'd stop making this soup is say if uh, my son was allergic to it. Well, Dusty, time to lie to your mother. I talk about this red car to convince him. Then he's like, he, he's gonna be a brummy too now. Dinosaur bones don't belong to any one person. They belong to a posterity. Huh? <laughs> posterity? BAFTA award for our Dusty. And Mama is like, Take this tail for my son's sake. Misty has made the dinosaur rib cage into a cool chair, but I have to buy her something expensive so I can have it back. But then she says the chair has cooties. I don't really want it anymore. Mr. Bigfoot has the leg bone to use as a crutch as he has a poorly foot, but Bigfoot's foot still hurt. Maybe if you help massage Bigfoot's feet to ease the pain, then Bigfoot will give you the bone. What? You must have a very strong body to massage Bigfoot feet. That much foot can get very stinky, especially because Bigfoot wear no sock. What is this? Well, luckily Pooh has been Lux maxing. There is no challenge too tough for our Pooh. So one gets into position. This little piggy goes to market. And this little piggy... Ah, the strength is returning to Bigfoot's foot. And then he kicks me up the arse. Nah, not really. Ms. Ava. She has the dinosaur skull. What's it to you? Have you been snooping? This skull fits my melancholy mood. Unless you find a cooler prehistoric artifact. Off to the Mohukum ziggurat. I go as suggested by Ava herself. Plenty of macabre pieces in there. I guess this perfectly placed thing will do. I reach out to grab it, but then the bloody mummy hobbles in, moaning in his boomerish way. Why are you trying to steal from me? I have so little here. God, I feel like pure shite. Then he has the cheek to say that I'm not scary enough. I'll show you, mate. Look at this karate. Just take the urn. Just leave me alone. So alone. I'm sorry mate. Look, let's talk about this top hat with the dinosaur in my back pocket. I'll go to see Honest Jackie. Well, 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 String. If it isn't Super Citizen Poo. He decides he wants the bones to stay in Strange Town for all to see. Then one must construct the bones. Correctly, of course. Here's Frankie Fusilli now. He congratulates me on my splendid sleuthing whatever that means. But then he wants me to construct it wrong. Lads, I can't be arsed doing that. So I go to the saloon to get some grub, which is where conveniently our artifact is to be erected. Dusty helps us construct it for some reason. I don't know why. Honest is all smug. Frankie is pissed. You know what? Cut the crap, fellas, and have a good old snog. The doomed earth. An errant asteroid hurtles towards earth, much to Emperor Zizzle's delight. Stop this natural accident before it's too late. Somewhere in a distant galaxy, I guess on Emperor Zizzle's spaceship, they're all talking bollocks about asteroids. The puzzle is deep and also complex. Reactions but evacuate the planet is what we must do. Do it. Recall Burple. Hey, what's up? Burple here. Long time no see, chaps. Speaks like a posh bloody twat. Return up to us on this ship on the instant. And then he talks some more of the alien bollocks. Soon all asteroids will be away, and on our human studies will continue again one day. Yes, one special day. I vow this. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, Jeb is like, Excuse me, Pooh. I said, Excuse me. Pooh runs to him like, Yes, sweetie. I'm glad I caught you. There's a uh, trouble brewing. Oh, it's that wretched Kent Hackett trying to force him to sell the ranch, knowing full well Jeb is strapped for cash. I'll handle that for you, pal. We head over to the farm to stop that do-no-gooder. And look at him strutting his stuff. The twat. Then he starts start chatting shy. Jeb is like, not so fast, Kent, old boy. And he's like... I had a little help for my- Oh, so you made Pooh scrounge for you. Suddenly, a meteor crashes to Earth. Kent, the smug bastard, is like, Congrats, Jeb. This farmer uh, hole in the ground is all yours. I'm going to spend some money in the club. I bought a farm, but I took home a crater. First of all, 
I bought the farm, I think you'll find. Oh, bloody hell. Here's another bloody twat. Oh my gosh. Who says that? An asteroid in Strange Town. Well, yeah, that's relatively normal. Ain't no story here, but the excuse I'm gonna have to give to my wife. He has a wife? Jeb Law, everyone. Maybe another asteroid will hit me before I can tell her. He'd be saying the type of shit I'd be saying on a Sunday night when I've got the Sunday scaries. But anyway, we need a telescope to see if there are any more asteroids because Penelope, she wants to be the one to warn everyone of their impending doom. Didn't Honest Jackson have a telescope? I don't know. Instead, we grill Tank Grunt about a telescope and he gets all nervous talking about it for some reason. Well, after Natter into Misty, we know why. He's like overprotective of Arafusili and spies on her. Oh, we've gone right off that tank. One needs to catch the fella in the act, so to speak. So we get Luther to flirt with Ara and then the bloke frigs off to flirt while I'm stuck in midair. He struts up to Ara to commend the flirting, but she's like, can I ask you a favour? Oh yeah, my dad wants me to move this bookshelf. Can you do it? Oh, look at that bloody face. I guess Pooh's coming along too. Now all in Frankie's abode. It's kind of nice, isn't it? Only five paces away from Dusty's trailer. Whole bloody worlds apart. Suddenly, Frankie appears and ain't happy that Luther and I are in his house. Then Ara frigs off and me and Luther are threatened to get fed to the fishes, as it were. Calm him down. I'm sorry. Frankie seemed really calm to me, and I was on the bloody edge of my seat with that interaction I were. Off the hook now, excuse the pun, but I'm no longer allowed to speak with Ara anymore. You know what? Didn't like her anyway, man. Get out! Outside now, and Tank and Ara are conversating of all things. She mentions his telescope. Tank then says, sorry baby. Baby? What is going on here? Actually, you know what? I'll just leave you to it. Oh, there's his telescope. Don't mind if I do. Lovely jubbly. Penelope immediately spots my telescope. It's a real beauty. Give it quick. The cheek. And then tells me to move my hand. And well, it turns out my hand uh, was covering up the biggest asteroid ever. Jeb politely asks to have a gander numerous times. Whilst Penelope continues chatting bollocks, ignoring the poor old twat until she gets very annoyed. Buzz off, Jeb. I'm thinking she screams. What a bitch. Poor old Jeb. Look at him squelching off. I tell Alfred of my quandaries. I see you require a mode of transportation to a nearby asteroid and an explosive with which to demolish said asteroid. I understand. I can facilitate your requirements for a fee of 5,000 smoleons. No, you're worth, Alfie. God, I'm so shite at this car one. Return after midnight. Well, it is after midnight. Oh, he's kicked me out. So I return after midnight tomorrow and we follow the little guy to a quantum matter transporter that will transfer me and my body to the surface of the asteroid and an explosive in one of Alfred's spare heads. Lovely. Place the bomb in the crevice or don't place the bomb in the crevice. That is the question. With the bomb well and truly placed, I begin to ponder. This doesn't even look like Oppie Alfie. It looks like Metal Homer from Futurama. One crosses the wires like some sort of cool person. And then Zizzle and his bitches appear, followed by a load of alien bollocks being spoken. And there we go, I saved Strange Town, didn't I? It all came to an end. In a scheme for higher ratings, Daddy Big Books decides a tragedy should befall Strange Town. In this season ending cliffhanger, we begin in my basement and Daddy wants to shake things up a little with a bit of a cliffhanger. But will let me know when he thinks of something. Now get out of my office! As soon as I exit my house, he has an idea. Of course, he wants another bad guy. So, what I've been thinking is along the lines of this headline. Mad mechanoid menaces mid-size municipality. Oh, how I love newspeak. So that's the plan. Reprogram dear old Oppy Alfred into a raving lunatic bot from... Wait. Monster raving ballooning party? Oh yeah, I forgot I bought this hog. I head to our uh, zizzle. Water is the evil enemy of all time. Why should it be can de be to destroy we and robots and other creatures? Bah. Now a new gun that is most powerful is on a horizon that is bad. I love I heard you talking to yourself about water pistol. Can I have it? No. So I show off my karate moves and be a little cheeky rascal. 
and then he reluctantly gives me the super hyper mega super drencher upgrade. He fiddles with me thing and then frigs off. Oh god, I really don't want to spray Alfred. I hope all is well with you today. What the hell? He's so sweet. How heartbreaking. I'm sorry, but for the sake of on with the game, I spray him. The traumatic screams of Alfred are something I'll never forget. He'll keep me tossing and turning at night. His optimusy explodes into smithereens. And of course, I'm caught in the proverbial act by Arrow and Dusty, with me bloody splatter shot. Of all things, how humiliating. I am not a shooter main, I swear. Where's Alfred? They ask. I oh, no. That was Alfred Pooh. What on earth happened to you? Um, he just fell apart or something. I'm just lying for a laugh. Tristan might know what to do. No. Here's Gamer Daddy B update. This is only the beginning. Return to my office for further instruction. Then that bitch Penelope just steals my plutonium. Entering the basement, Daddy is like, Finally, Pooh, can you move any slower? Hold on, you can move slower. In that chug chug cola commercial, that mascot gets you every time. Oh my god, mate, rub it in. He asks what happens to our Alfred. I told him he sadly exploded. And he finds pleasure in that. Asking if people cried of all sorts. Now he wants me to sell Alfred's parts online. That's my new idea, so see it done. I collect all the parts of him, mate. He's like a broken buncle. Look at his poor little head. He really is the heart and soul. Look at the townsfolk gathered by his parts. Now with all of my broken friend in my back pocket, he begins to speak. You traitor. Wait, he's going to be a bitch now. You traitor. Of all the people I thought would stand up to Daddy Big Bucks, you were the one I believed in the most. God, I feel like pure shite. Yeah, Oppie knew about the show all along too. He played along because it was fun to watch, but now Daddy wants to kill him off. He doesn't want to play anymore. I agree to end Daddy's tyranny with him. Firstly, we must rebuild Alfred. I reluctantly convinced Tristan to fix him as apparently he designed and invented him. And you know what? The extensive list of reasons to hate this twat keep on increasing. His time was nearly up, so there's no need to rebuild him, unless you can convince me otherwise. So I grudgingly romance him, and then he agrees to rebuild him. And Alfred's like, um, it turns out like Alfred's 30 years old, so that's like still really young. And he built him when he was five, so what, that makes him at least 35. Mate, you look a very weathered 35 year old. That's all I'll say, love. Don't, can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all, but that's all I'll say. Anyway, off we go. Oh, Honest Jackson is coming too. There's room for everyone. And Oppie is back, everyone. He says, let me get back into character. A wink. Salutations, humans. And basically breaks the news that they're all on a telly show. Daddy B is orchestrating it all. Even bloody Luther, his bloody son, didn't have a clue. Tristan begins to scold him for lying. Oh, but I wasn't programmed to lie or tell the truth, Tristan. So piss off. Unfortunately, Pooh has known all along. What? What the hell, Alfred? is dropped me in it, as it were. What the flippity flip? Stand aside, people. This is where I come in. And Jimmy the neck drags me off by the scruff of me neck. No, Jimmy, wait. There's a alien spaceship part right there. Now under lock and key, I'm in bloody jail. But nothing out of the norm for poor old Pooh. Here's Daddy B. You should make this town angry more often. Now what he wants me to do to finish this very tense episode is convince the townsfolk that they're not on a TV show. And this is where we reach our crossroads. Okay, just let me out or I am not your pawn. I'll start with the first choice where we convince three people that the TV show was a joke. Pay off Optimum Alfred and force him to leave the town. Once he's out of the picture, you and I can keep this TV show going indefinitely. I've got big plans for you, Pooh. You will be my new apprentice Emperor Pooh. The baddest baddie strange town has ever seen. Well, I guess I am um, somewhat of a baddie. And with the gentle click of a door, I'm released from prison. I feel kind of bad lying to me mates, but if they're like stupid enough to believe they're not on the telly, like, like didn't Tank read out a cola advert? We lie to Peppa Pete, Mama Hog, and Arafu Silly. Once the lies are complete, I'm desperate for a piss. 
but I must reluctantly force Alfred out of town. Wants me to leave town, eh? Typical big buck manoeuvre, alright. 4,000 simoleons, and if you say anything about this, I'll sing like a canary. Which is a metaphor for, yeah, you get it. No, no I don't. I hand over 4,000 big ones, and he's like, thanks sucker, I was planning to leave town anyway, there's nothing for me here. I've got dreams to see. I'm done with this tumbleweed town. I've got bigger dreams to download. Got bigger fish to fry, man. Bigger fish to fry. Now Daddy has arranged to cap this episode off with a giant piece of humble pie and arrange for the people to meet in town. They all apologise to me and blame poor old Alfred. Can you ever forgive us? Well, not you, Tristan, you twat. Here's daddy now. So, let's talk about your future then. And we're like on an asteroid for some reason. He talks about the future of Strange Town and what could be. You could be a, a superhero, a mad scientist, a, a wizard, or a ninja. Gosh, the possibilities are endless, Pooh. Where do we begin? Who has a little boogie and then we get abducted by aliens. And then it's followed by this weird cutscene of Daddy Big Books on his lonely at the top type shirt on a yacht with his alien prozzy. Enough of that. I'm not your pawn. Daddy is angry. If you don't want to help this show ascend to the kind of greatness then you'll stay here until it's cancelled. Ha! Ha ha ha! Then suggests he's gonna get Optimum Alfred to do his dirty work. He'll never serve like poo. Here's our Jimmy now. Come on, let us out. He calls me a traitor. You're gonna be here for 20 years. Meanwhile, the rest of us are gonna figure out what we're gonna do next. I'll be watching you like a hawk though. So I convince him by talking about this flower to let me out. And to prove that I'm on his side, I must destroy all the cameras. And arrows right. The cameras are so big. Can't believe I've never noticed them before. Once they're all gone, what next, eh? Personally, I think you should pay. Daddy Big Box a visit, tell him we ain't playing by his rules. While spitting the proverbial feathers, he starts his bloody rant. I saw you destroying those cameras. You'll never work in this town again. Blah, 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 he's so two-faced. And then suddenly, MP Zizzle appears telling Daddy his time is up. But, but we had a deal. No remembering of that. Am I able? Now please, to come now with me. There is not a choice you have. Purple appears behind him and Daddy screams in agony. Ah! As him and Purple just walk off normally. The lads walk in and are like, why are they taking that man? <laughs> that man? <laughs> Zizzle is like, yes, and I am he who is saving the day now. I alone was a hero that defeated him. Well done, Emperor Zizzle. Enough. The time is now for celebration. Let us be in rejoice mode. Dusty is like, that Emperor Zizzle isn't such a bad guy after all, is he? Let's party. A cutscene of Daddy B has been chucked out of town and plays, and then the credits begin to roll. So, there's actually a final episode, which I thought you could only unlock through connecting it to another Game Boy Advance. But someone in the Sim Speedrunning Discord server discovered that you can actually unlock it by collecting 100 alien spaceship parts and selling all 100 alien spaceship parts at the same time. So I've developed this technique where I go into an episode, look at all the places where these parts spawn, and exit the episode and then go into another. And then finally, a momentous occasion for Poe Ampersand, a very special reunion. Five years after the final episode, it's time to cash in on straight Strange Town's cult status. Help Kent Hackett find the best love stars and most reviled villains for one last action-packed adventure. Where did the script come from? An outside writer? Did I, did I fire Darby? I, I don't remember. Overwhelmed by the excitement, Pooh opened the letter that reads, During the making of Strange Town, several alternate story ideas were written, but eventually thrown out. The episode you're about to play takes place in an alternate universe 
five years after Strange Town was cancelled. The town has been taken over by aliens, led by the infamous Mayor Zizzle. Mayor? We hope you enjoy this peek into a strange town that almost was. One sachets over to the evil Kent Hackett, and he starts talking about reunion shows or some bollocks and how popular characters show up. Girl, why are you here then? Why are you here? He asks us to rearrange the transport for people who don't live here anymore and ask Mayor Zizzle for a place to throw the party and then talk some shite about how he's got Kaylee's old job or something. At this point, I'm like mates with everyone except for this yeti. I thought it was Bigfoot, but I need to know how can I meet them. After a good old natter with our Zizzle about top hats, he allows me to have a reunion. I understand now. Very. All is right, then. You are by me allowing to gather as a reunion. I say... The old club is where, where things are to be happening. Old club for reunion good. On my way to Frankie Fusilli and I think something, something strange is going on in Strange Town. He asked me to pitch him for the arrangement of the transport of his bitch daughter and Giuseppe and Kaylee. So I hand over 2000 simoleons. Now you sit back and let Frankie Fusilli take care of everything else. Exit in Frankie's abode is accompanied by a siren of sorts and it's none else but bloody tank grunt lying wait for the right time to retake the city if you're human and you hear this message track me down and join me also can you bring me some sockies some pants some water and okay long leave strange down not asking for much i'll be love and do you think if an alien heard that they would ignore it like oh it doesn't apply to me bloody can hack it rings me how did you get my number? So between the the people uh, still in town, uh, me, you and Frankie, blah, 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 that makes 11, right? I don't know, mate. Then tells me I should probably find Tank. Instead, I, I, found the, I found the Yeti and he gives me a little Yeti doll and I've been hugging the Yeti as well. I love him. Here's that Tank as well. He's all weird like in Monsters Inc where they get sent elsewhere. He's like, get out of my cave you space lizard. So I knock some sense into the old bastard by doing me karate moves. That'll show him. He asks if the invasion is over and tells me he's not leaving the cave unless he gets his old house back. Oh, here's Gamer Daddy B. Hey, you got a thing in your teeth. While you fix it, we'll cut a commercial. How can he see what's in my teeth? How can he tell what my teeth look like? I'm just peach pixels. Oh yeah, look at this, that chicken chug chug finally. Look at that score. I'm a pro gamer. I run into Peppa Pete who says, it warms me heart to hear your sweet voice again. Love him. But then the sentimental shite bubble is burst when I realise Bloody Burple is living in Tank's house. I've been in the house for two seasons and I still can't find the bathroom. What gives? He's obsessed with the bog, isn't he? But he's willing to disappear for a small fee, so I pay him off and he beams off. I return to Tank and tell him of the news. And the bloke is so ecstatic. He runs in like slow motion. Exploring my old haunt, I happen across some of my old mates, such as Optimum Alfred, moaning about agreeing to come to this reunion. You humans are so lazy, I bet you don't have the energy to work five different jobs in a row. What's that got to do with the price of cheese, love? I'll show you, though. Lord Mole saying things like, Things have been better since you left. Misty Waters saying she's missing me at the sauna. Love, I never went there. I never went in there. And Dusty Hog no longer has a curfew after working all five jobs in a row. Yeah, that shows you. It's time for one to reunion. All the old faces make me tear up. We're having a right good old knees up. And without warning, Mayor Zizzle appears. Greetings, reunionizing people, humans. You are on the way to destruction. You have no chance to survive. Make your time. I have set you up the bomb, a place inside somewhere this room. What a gobshite. But he misses being the bad guy, and who can blame him? Everyone loves a good villain. Iris says to me that I've got to find the bomb and disarm it. Can you do it? Of course I can. I'm poo ampersand, after all. But hey, Giuseppe, we might die. Let's have one last snog before the world ends, eh? Sudden noise begins noising. And then there's fireworks. Haha, <laughs> you have destructed bomb and it is all good news. I, Mayor Zizzle, was doing a big fool on you. No bomb was there, only happiness. Oh, what do you like, you little tinker? Oh, look at that face. What a little tinker. Peter's like, Yar, you sly doggy. I'd pummel you if I wasn't so happy. Welcome back all to Strange Town. Now we will boogie. I vow this. Pooh ampersand and Mayor Zizzle boogie. 
the night away. All done, I give me mates one last cuddle and all that's left to do is the inevitable. You know what? I really like this game. I really liked it. So when I made that last Sims 2 video, I'm sorry for calling your childhood favourite game shite because it's actually all right. It's not as good as the, the other ones, but it's not the herbs, is it? And it's not busting out, but it's not the Sims 2 pets. Now that was shite, wasn't it? That was shite. Anyway, thank you for watching as always. Sorry it's been so long. It's been a combination of I've been working loads of hours and, I, and then also I was so over ambitious with making a different video. I didn't realise that games did take so long to play. I forgot that they take so long to play and also playing games takes a long time to play. So I am sorry, especially to those whose menstruation cycles may have been affected. I apologise. Just want to know what do you want me to post on like that community tab or post anything or like if you follow me on Twitter. I have a good moan on Twitter about life so you can do that but sometimes i don't have a moan i just retweet stuff because you can't no one can see your likes anymore can they so how you know what, what what's going on in my life if you can't see my likes i hope you enjoyed the video we've got bloody new prime minister now haven't we that's been a long time been a long bloody time shut the hell up you bitch bye